Alrighty. So in Bible study, we've been talking about um, spiritual gifts, right? Spiritual gifts. And uh, again, there's more spiritual gifts than those are, that are listed um, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8 through 10. I'm going to make reference to um, these gifts. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8 through 10, there's about nine of those gifts lift, uh, listed. So those are broken down or broke, broken out in categories. And I'll give you the categories, three categories, right? So not in any particular order. The first category I'll give you is vocal gifts. So when you read 1 Corinthians 12, 8 through 10, and you see those gifts, I want you to start thinking about how they're categorized in three groups. First is vocal gifts. What are those? When he refers to prophecy and interpretation of tongues, vocal gifts. The next is power gifts, power gifts. What are those? Faith, healing, and working of miracles. Again, power gifts, faith, healing, and working of miracles. And then this is what I'm going to focus on today, this grouping or this category, which is mental gifts, mental gifts, which are discernment, wisdom, and knowledge. Discernment, wisdom, and knowledge. So we have those three categories. Vocal gifts covers prophecy and interpretation of tongues. Power gifts covers faith healing and working of miracles. And then the third group, not in that particular order, but mental gifts covers discernment, wisdom, and knowledge. And we're going to deal with the mental gifts of what we refer to in 1 Corinthians 12, 8 through 10. The mental gifts. So now let us turn over to, or possibly should be there, in 1 Kings, we're going to see all three of these, the manifestation of these, of this category of this group called mental gifts, referred to as mental gifts. We're going to see that displayed or revealed in Solomon as he becomes the king of Israel. And we'll see it concerning a situation. So what am I, what am I referring to? So when we learn the Bible, when we are exposed to the Bible. Exposure to the Bible and learning God's word is, is for a reason, for a purpose. As we navigate through life, situations will come up, circumstances we will face, and we may not have an idea or a thought on how to handle that situation or how to rectify that situation. And that's where we turn to the word of God and we rely on the word of God to lead us and guide us by the spirit of God. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, he talks about the distribution of the gifts by the spirit. And we'll see that with Solomon. And then hopefully if time permits, I'll make reference to Jesus. We see that with Jesus. And I'll just go ahead and give you the scripture reference in John chapter eight, John chapter eight, starting in the uh, first, first verses and move it along. So first Kings, hopefully you had enough time to turn to first Kings chapter three, as well as uh, make a bookmark there in chapter four. So first Kings chapter three, verse nine, and for the sake of time, I'm just going to reference, uh, I'll read just a few of the scriptures. I won't go through all of them. So 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 9, what we, what's revealed to us here in the Bible is the prayer or the desire. Prayer or desire of this man, Solomon. So we made reference uh, in Bible study and maybe even last week, um, what is the best gift? Paul said there in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, I believe it's verse 31, the last verse, he says, and covet, and yet I tell you to covet the best gift. What is the best gift? 
it's, it's the gift that you need at that time. And we're going to see that uh, in, with Solomon. So here in 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 9, even before Solomon takes on this, this task, this duty that's been passed, that the baton has been passed to him from his father, David, King David, we read how that he goes immediately into prayer before even trying to, to, to uh, fulfill the office. So I'll read it to you from the King James text. First Kings 3, 9. Give, for, give therefore thy servant an understanding heart for what purpose? To judge thy people or your people, God, that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this thy so great a people? So notice the humility of Solomon. He's saying, okay, God asked him in previous verses, what do you want from Solomon? He says, give me an understanding heart because I have this task before me. You're asking me to judge your people. I'm going to need an understanding heart and I'm going to need discernment to be able to understand between good and bad. I'm, I'm going to need to tap into the Holy Spirit so he can enlighten me when I have to make a decision in life. For he says, for who is able to judge this thy so great a people? So even before, a, even before a situation comes up, Solomon is looking ahead. He's insightful. He's looking ahead. And, and we have to be like that just in case because we've all lived life or we are living life and things come up, things happen. And it's so much better when we're prayed up as it, as the saying goes, being prayed up and, and ready for before we encounter it. So Solomon was looking ahead. So now let's go down to verse 12 and you can go back. I encourage you to go back and just read the whole chapter for the sake of time, uh, time allotted. I'm just going to hit some of the verses, but I encourage you to go back and read the whole thing. Verse 12 of that chapter. Behold, now this is the answer to prayer. You want God to answer your prayer? We want God to answer our prayer? Let our prayers be unselfish. Let our prayers be in alignment with the will of God. Notice here in verse 12, God answered, Behold, I have done according to thy words. Lo, I have given thee a wise and understanding heart, so that there was none like thee before, neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. So God answers prayer. It was that desire. Solomon said, it's my desire to have an understanding heart, so I can be able to discern between good and bad. And God says, okay, so that you can judge so I can judge your people, God. So God says, I, I can do that for you. I'm tasking you with this. I'm asking you to do this. Then I need to equip you. I need to enable you. I need to empower you with the spiritual tools that you will need to accomplish my will. So God answers that prayer, answers that prayer. And now in, in this chapter, verse 16 through 23, I'm not going to read it all. But this is the account. I'll just go over the story. This is the account of the two women and one child. Two women and one child. The Bible tells us how that did the women, the women had um, one of the, they had one child. One child had died and many of us know the story. So we see the situation. We see the situation before us, right? Solomon was faced with this situation to make a judgment, to make a judgment call, and the right one, the right call. So the Bible says this, and let's go down to verse 24. Now this is the knowledge, the discernment, and the wisdom that we see here in Solomon manifested. After Solomon questioned the ladies, after he questioned and found out and got knowledge on the situation, he came to the conclusion 
as he was being led by the spirit. This is the spiritual gift, wisdom, or knowledge. He gained knowledge first. He discerned good and bad. And then he was able to execute a decision which equated or equals wisdom. Wisdom being knowledge that's applied at the right time with the right people, the right situation. So he says in verse 24, and the king said, bring me a sword. And they brought him a sword before the king because the women, both women were saying, this is my child, this is my child. So Solomon said, bring me a sword. They brought him a sword. And the king said, all right, I want you to take that sword and I want you to divide the living child into two and give half to each one of them. Give half, one half to the one lady and one half to the other lady. And immediately, let's go down to verse 27, or even before verse 27, the true mother said, no, I'd rather for the other woman to take the child versus the child be slain. So it was through that situation and through exercising the knowledge given to him by the Holy Spirit, he's able to execute wisdom. Now, I don't believe he was going to kill the child. That doesn't make sense. Why kill the child and, and, and give half a dead child to one woman, half a dead child? No one gains. No one, no one is the wiser, right? No one becomes, no one wins. But he needed to find out. He needed to probe. He needed to find out who the true mother was because a true mother will say, I'd rather my child live with someone else and be alive versus dead and I have half his body. So, in verse 27, we see the decision. Then the king answered and said, give her the living child. Give the true mother the living child because that's the normal or should be the normal response of a mother, of a mother. I'd rather, want, I'd rather have my child live. Whether he or she's living with me or not, I'd rather have him live than to be dead. And in no wise slay it, Solomon said, she is the mother thereof. She is the mother. In verse 28, and all Israel heard of the judgment which the king had judged, and they feared the king, for they saw the wisdom of God was in him to do judgment. So he didn't have to boast on him, himself. They saw the wisdom. They saw the wisdom as a result of how he handled this particular situation. So again, we see the mental gifts at work there, that category, that group. Knowledge, he gained knowledge, he asked questions. He discerned what is a true mother? And this is all as the Holy Spirit's enlightening him and helping him, because remember, he prayed for this. So he gained knowledge. As a result of that knowledge, he's able to discern good and bad, the good mother, the bad mother, or the good woman, the bad woman. And then he was able to make a decision or execute wisdom, wisdom based on the knowledge. So we, we see the results in 1 Kings chapter 4, 1 Kings chapter 4, verse 29, of his wisdom. We say oh, Solomon was the, most, was the wisest man. Well, why was that? A lot of times we hear these within the church community, religious community, we hear these statements, but we don't get any follow-up. Why was he considered the wisest man in the land? Well, God said it, but why did God say it? So now we have the reference in 1 Kings chapter 3. But here in 1 Kings chapter 4, verse 29, the Bible reads, King James again, and God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding exceeding much and largeness of heart even as the sand is on the seashore, verse 30. And Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the children of the East Country and all the wisdom of Egypt. For, verse 31, for he was wiser than all men. He was wiser than all men. But it was a result of chapter 3, verse 9, his prayer. It wasn't personal exaltation. It was what God was doing through him. 
it's, it was what that those gifts, that category of gifts, mental gifts, knowledge, discernment, and wisdom. They were executed. Solomon was the vessel. The situation arose, and God was able to use him for the greater glory of God and an evangelistic atmosphere. Because now all the earth had heard, then known earth, then known world, as they call it, heard of his wisdom, and he was wiser than all men. Now let's go to verse 32. And this kind of concludes here. Verse uh, 32, chapter 4, verse 32. And these are some of the results of Solomon. And he spake 3,000 proverbs. So this is how we get the book of Proverbs, right? It just didn't happen. The Bible gives us reference. He spake 3,000 proverbs, and his songs were 1,005. So 1,005 songs, 3,000 proverbs. So a total of 4,005 from this one man who the spiritual gift was manifested in and through for the glory of God and the helping of people. And then verse 34, and there came all people to hear the wisdom of Solomon. So there it is. Because the spiritual gift was distributed to this man, Solomon, who was a usable vessel, as a result, and this is, this is where we want to be, right? This is where we want to get. Because Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men. So in 1 Kings 4, 34, we see the Lord being lifted up through his servant Solomon by wisdom. And the Bible says, and there came of all people, all people. So we see this, all people again, to hear the wisdom of Solomon from all the kings of the earth, which had heard of his wisdom. So all people, and then he tells us all the kings. So it wasn't just the poor, the poverty stricken. It wasn't just the needy, financial needy or whatever. All people came. Again, God cares about all people, all categories of life, all status of life. And the Bible tells us in Romans 10, 17, faith, belief, trust, and confidence in whom? In God cometh by what? Cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. So God the Holy Spirit, going back to uh, spiritual gifts, the distribution, the Spirit of God, he distributes the necessary gifts or the gifts that are necessary or needed for the situation or the circumstance so that for us, the church, living in the dispensation of grace, so that Jesus can be lifted up. And as a result of Jesus being lifted up and people being helped with their problems, other people are drawn, are drawn to Jesus Christ and his salvation. So it all works together for the good, for the salvation and the souls of men and women. So um, let me just touch on John chapter eight. So we see that's an Old Testament example, right? Of the distribution of that category of spiritual gifts, mental gifts, right? The knowledge, the discernment and the wisdom. Now if we go to John chapter eight, and I'm not going to read any, I'm just going to tell you the, the account and the story. This is the account where many of us are familiar with where the woman was caught in adultery and they came to Jesus. And they said, according to the law, the Mosaic law, she should be stoned. And there's many sermons preached on this and there's many things uh, said about this. But we also see as we refer to it as the spiritual gifts being manifested. Now, the Bible tells us that God had given Jesus, uh, Jesus had the Holy Spirit without limits, right? Without unlimited reference scripture, John 3, 34. He was given the Spirit, so he, he wasn't like us, where it was a distribution of the various gifts, right? Jesus had them all working in his life all the time because of the Immaculate Birth. I don't want to get into all of that. So in John chapter 8, they came to Jesus. So he had knowledge of the situation. 
what she did was against the law. He had knowledge of the law. He had knowledge of her transgression, her sin, if you please. But what did Jesus do? He, he, he didn't answer them. He wrote on the ground. He had knowledge. He began to discern, right? He makes the statement, he who is without sin, because he knew one of them were also the guilty party, or if not the actual physical guilty party, they were watching or something, but he discerned. And he made the statement, he who's without sin, let him cast the first stone. So he didn't deny the Bible because he gave it to Moses, right? So he says, but okay, go ahead and execute what the law says. If you are without sin, if your conscience is clean. So he used discernment and then discernment and then he spoke in wisdom, right? And we know the results. They all left from the eldest to the youngest. They all departed. And it was Jesus and the woman was there by herself. And we know the rest of the story. Jesus says, uh, I forgive you your sins. Go and sin no more. The point I'm making here in this particular case is that we see the spiritual, all that category, mental gifts operating there. Knowledge, discernment, and then wisdom. So with Solomon, with Jesus, and there's many other accounts. And this is, for me, whenever we talk about something in the Bible, you can always find a, a reference or an account in the Bible to support the Bible. So um, as we look at spiritual gifts, and I'll talk about these in, in the weeks to come, um, how we can identify them in the Bible. So it takes all the guesswork out, right? Because God's word doesn't contradict itself. If he told us this in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 8 and 10, we can see that. We can find it in the Old Testament. We can find it in the lives of those in the New Testament. And now we can be assured those same gifts can operate in and through us because God is not a respecter of persons. All right. All right. I'm going to end it right there. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your love, your goodness, and your faithfulness. We ask you to continue to bless, Lord. Bless as we move forward in our uh, services uh, today, our, the service program, the preaching of your word. The, I pray, Lord, the words, your word as it lands upon us our ears and hearts, that you would write it up on our hearts so that we may execute that which we've heard through the power of the Holy Spirit. And as you do so, we'll thank you for it. Christ in your name. Amen.